You're welcome back and you're still watching Newsnight. We're live from the nation's capital in Abuja. I'm Christian Nogodo. Thanks for joining us. Like we said, General John Eneche retired. He's the former coordinator defense media operations. He joins us now. Very warm welcome coming to Newsnight. Thank you, Christian. Yeah, this, of course, uh, to the whole nation, it's a mourning period. Yeah. I wonder why the flags and even the forces flags are not yet flying at uh, huh. half mast and the rest. Very turbulent period for yeah. you, for you, uh, a former uh, a retired general and the rest. How, how, tell us, I mean, take us through the kind of pains, the kind of feelings, you know, uh, there. Uh, you rightly said it. You, whatever you see on the external is a reflection of what is within. You can see me in black. Normally we mourn our dead with red, I mean black bands on our shoulder. That is just it. It has been a black period for me, and I want to assume so many of my colleagues out there. Because we have seen this in the past, which we are not good at all. I listened to you, you made reference to Odi, Zaki Biam, and some that were even silently done, as it were in the past, with one particular reference to somewhere in Benway State, where the governor, as it were, then Governor Tom, had to come out to appeal to the people, where a captain and some other soldiers were slaughtered mm. on their way for a peace mission. And I can tell you, a few isolated ones that we are not brought to the fore. So it's really, really bad, and I feel so bad for somebody an officer up to the rank of lieutenant colonel, and I even tried to find out some information about him. This was an officer that fought in the Northeast, Marte, and one other location that he led the operations to liberate them. And the same person who is still there to make sacrifice, you just slaughter him like that. No, it's a bad time for us. It's what, a money period. What could really have gone wrong for a people to turn? against their own military. When you talk about the people, the people in that area, you classify them. We have the, 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 the leadership, the local cultural leadership. I look at the traditional rulers, opinion leaders and all. Then these people, from the information I, I, I got, are they cultists or rival groups, communities? So who are the people we are talking about now? What class of people? What is their relationship? What is their feeling? What is their patriotism towards the military and the country at large? So is this class of people that we're going to talk about and how are they controlled? How are they managed? So it is it, it be the imagination of the normal person who is supposed to have patriotic feeling for this country. For me, it is an abnormality. And it is a continuation of rascality audacity by criminal elements. And um, would you say, I mean, the last speaker here was saying that uh, there was total failure of uh, intelligence uh, and, you know, no backup uh, scenario. Uh, if, you know, the military were going into a troubled community, um, why do it alone? Where is the uh, secret police, the DSS? Where, where are the other special forces and, uh, and the rest? You know, I mean, uh, you've extolled the virtue of the commanding officer of 181 uh, Amphibious Battalion there. Uh, you know, a vet who helped to liberate Mate and other Boko Haram held uh, areas in the northeast in Borono State. When we talk about intelligence, we talk about operations now. We look at the first information that you get. And what was the first information? Two communities at each other's neck. And of course, we have had issues with other security agencies, which is not actually good for us. That without the presence of the military, military support, most of the other security agencies will not carry out their statutory responsibility as they were given. And we have established that over the years, which I would say is not good for us. That is why anything that was, military is all over the whole place. The military, is, people have been saying overstretched, and I want to agree with them now. While I was in active service, I was, not, I was playing down on it, but that is the truth of the matter. It's got to levels that the other security agencies will not be specific. If they say if the military is not going with us, we will not go. 
and that has affected the society. So that every other time they will call military, military, and we are almost getting used to it. And then the military, the information you give them because of patriotism, they will believe you and they will move because of the urgency. So I will not look at it strictly that it was failure of intelligence. We got the intelligence and they say, look, these people, they are at each other, they are fighting. What do you do? If you delay, it's the same military that will say they made calls and they did not respond. So you are caught in between taking a decision. The one you will weigh that will save the situation. And that was why they moved. So I don't look at it as a failure of intelligence at all. Otherwise, if you do that, you now begin to put the blame right from the hierarchy at the top down to the, to the operational level of command. And if we begin to look at it that way, then you will now be demoralizing the military. Well, the president, I mean, uh, had spoken very copiously about uh, what he expects. He has directed the defense headquarters and the chief of the defense staff. In fact, in his letter, which he personally signed, written on a green sheet, I mean, it's uh, most unusual. That has really never happened in recent times, even from uh, former President Jonathan's uh, time, uh, late Yaradua, or uh, Tinubu's predecessor, Buhari. And he says here, the defense headquarters and the chief of defense staff have been granted full authority to bring to justice anybody found to have been responsible for this unconscionable crime against the Nigerian people. Would this include the leveling down of Okoma and the warring communities like we saw in Odi, in Zakibian? and uh, maybe in Niger State? Well, if I must start, let me, in my personal capacity, commend the political will of the Commander-in-Chief for giving that directive. Because sometimes people could be evasive. The situation we are in this country is not a situation whereby any chicken-hearted person should fall back and not give the appropriate directive to whoever is supposed to carry out what is in the overall interest of the whole nation. Like, I also looked at that statement, and I saw that he said, any attack on our military is an attack on the whole on nation. The nation. yes. But myopically, you may think that the two communities here comprise of those ethnic groups alone. It may not be so. You will see a Hausa man there, you will see an Igbo man there, you will see an Idoma man there, you see all. So it's a nation that Nigeria, Nigeria is there. Nigeria is there. Mm. And he's in charge. So you are now talking about leveling. What leads to leveling? Leveling is when people hold back information. Refusing, that is one, refusing to give the appropriate security agency the information to pick the people out to face the full cost of the law. That is one. Then two, if information is given and there is armed resistance to arrest. What do I mean by armed resistance? As you are coming to arrest them, they are now wanting to repel you. What do you do in that situation as a military person? Even an ordinary person, a civilian. And with, are, the situation are, and with the situation on ground. On ground. So those, for me, are the two reasons that lead to what you call leveling. And it can be averted. How? If only I had the previous uh, conversation. conversation and the man was talking about traditional institutions, they have a lot to do. And we're now going to directly to policing, community policing in, in totality, to bring the people I, out. I think the king of uh, Ewo so is uh, quietly or quickly exonerated himself that he's uh, somewhere in the U.S., that he's overseas, mm. while the conflagration, you know, But he has, he's kingdom. supposed to have subordinates. He's supposed to have the, the people that are the, the next council level, of chiefs, the council yeah. of chiefs, people that he can send. Elders, so, yeah. elders. So what we are, we can be done to avoid the leveling is to ensure that the appropriate intelligence is brought out and then when the, the, the criminals, the perpetrators of this criminal act, are to be apprehended. If they don't voluntarily submit themselves, hand over themselves, let them not resist. That's what I so can tell you. So that community definitely will not exist? Again. No, it will. The community will exist. 
it, yes, it depends on how it is handled on both sides now. Because I, from a recent uh, experience we had, I am consulting for a, a community where they had a lot of security challenges and on getting there to where the forest where the criminals, the kidnappers are, they resisted. And what happened? The, the troops from Operation West Stroke had to, because open fire. open fire, when they are firing you, what do you do? You must uh, defend yourself. You defend yourself in the course of the defense. Some, I mean, the, 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 the kingpin was, was uh, neutralized, and that was how peace now came to that area for about two months. In the same way, that is what will normally happen, because it is the training, and it is a best practice in any operation. But leveling can be avoided, like we said, and if there is cooperation from all the people that, and as I'm speaking, I hope, and let them talk to whoever the criminals were, let them surrender themselves to the to authority. The authority and follow the due process of the law. Okay, before we let you go, I remember during your service period as uh, the uh, coordinator of defense media operations, you know, the Amnesty International had come up with a very terrible uh, report against the Nigerian military, its high-handedness, it was killing uh, women and children, Boko Haram, you know, adherents and the rest. How they've not said anything, you know, up till now. Amnesty is the only issues that they are interested in that concerns them. That's when they see human rights violations. Well, I think uh, if you will recall my responses at it were then, I was also concerned that why is it or was it that it's only when they will even get reports, they will call it research. For me, on substance, I'm a top researcher. As I speak to you, I'm still on research now. To see how our military can be well managed, you get research, you have your class, you have your sample. They will just come out. So it calls for concern. I assume that if it's a fair organization, which it's supposed to be, they should have now come out to make a statement regarding this unfortunate and very painful incident to all Nigerians. But I have not had nothing. And I think the time is not, too, it's not too early for what we saw, what we have had over the days. So just like you are surprised, I'm also surprised that if it's a, a, you know, a, a, an umpire that is unbiased, they should also come out and say something. Probably their focus is just on military alone, and maybe on Nigerian military, or they have other motives, I don't know. But I am not too uh, surprised in a way also because it has been their track record of hitting us hard, you know, trying to, you know, poke nose or dig up issues where there are no issues. Try to force issues, to force conviction, to force commitment. How demoralizing us. can this be for the Nigerian uh, military, for the troops, you know, considering the various theater of operations. Does it in any way slow down actions, operations? Yes, it would have slowed down, but for the immediate reaction of the appropriate superior authorities, capped up by what the, command, the directive of the commander-in-chief today, yeah. it will prop them up. If it is a military that I know and I belong to passively, the same thing with the chief of defense staff, you saw that he actively mm -hmm. came out and said that move into action. And begin to you know set up a uh, investigation, um, uh, investigation to unravel. The same thing with the chief of army staff. So they are on top as far as I'm concerned. And yeah, with because, that, the uh, troops reports, reports reaching us is that uh, there's no going in or coming out of that yes, community. So that it is locked down. They have to bring out the perpetrators, and that is where the cooperation with the armed forces is highly desirable and necessary for the locals. All right. Uh, Thank you so very much, uh, General you. John Eneche, retired former uh, coordinator, defense media operations, so coming to shed the light on this. And we hope from time to time you would oblige us, Thank you. you know, to give us uh, some perspectives on military operations and security issues in Nigeria. Thank you, Christian. Thank you very much.